Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor James Woods from Abundant Life in Woodbridge, Virginia. And I'm making this video just to tell everybody why we don't baptize people by saying in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, by saying this, I don't mean to demean anybody's experience with Jesus or their Christianity or question their salvation, but I do want to let them know what is biblical and what is biblically spoken. Now, the question arises, well, doesn't the Bible say to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Well, we're going to examine scripture and we're going to go find the way that they actually baptize in the Bible. So if you follow along with me, I have a King James Bible on hand. Um, it's my apostolic study Bible, but it's the King James um, Bible. It just so happens that the footnotes have been written by fellow apostolics. Uh, Matthew 28 and 19 of the King James Version of the Bible reads, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now one thing that I want to point out is we all know the name of the Son because we say that the name of the Son is Jesus. So Son in, in and of itself is not a name. The second thing I want to point out is in this scripture, nobody is actually being baptized. Jesus is telling his disciples who will become the apostles how he wanted them to baptize. All right, everybody got that? How he actually wanted them to go out and baptize, which would be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, these are nouns. These are not pronouns. These are not the actual name. If we look through scripture, the Father has a name, the Son has the name, and the Holy Ghost has the name. Um, if we will go to uh, the fifth chapter of John, I'm turning there in the book, so everybody just turn there in the book with me, to the fifth chapter of John. And then if we would examine verse 43, it says here in verse 43, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Notice that Jesus comes in the name of the Father, and that name be in Jesus. For those of us who are biblical scholars, if you will study, Jesus actually means Jehovah saves. Um, in the Hebrew is Yahweh and Yahshua, and Yahshua means Yahweh saves. So the name of the Father is Jesus. Check this out from John chapter 14. I've turned to the 14th chapter of John. And if we read right here, um, in verse 7 of John 14, it says, If you had known me, you should have known my father also from hence, for if ye know him and have seen him. So Jesus says, you have already seen the father. Philip in verse 8 says, uh, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father, and it suffices us. So if you show us the father, we'll be satisfied. But look what Jesus said in verse 9. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? The, the thing I want to point out about all these scriptures is that the name of the Father is Jesus. Now, the name of the Holy Ghost is also Jesus. Let's go to John 14 and verse 26. In John 14, 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. So the Holy Ghost comes in the name of Jesus, and the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Let's turn to Romans 8 and 9. In Romans, the, the eighth chapter in verse number nine, the Bible reads, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Know this, it's the spirit of Christ. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of Christ. Therefore, the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Amen. When you die, you're going to be laying in that casket. They're going to call that flesh that's in that casket by your name, but your spirit that departed bears the same name. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Now, I'm not twisting the scripture from Matthew uh, 28 and 19, but understand Jesus is speaking that after his resurrection. But I want you to know from the book of Acts to the book of Revelations, Jesus has ascended into heaven. He's no longer here on the earth, 
and his apostles went around baptizing people. And every baptism after Jesus' resurrection occurred in the name of Jesus. And we're going to look at some of these references. Um, I'm actually not even going to go to the book of Acts first. I'm actually going to go to the book of Romans. And we're going to go to Romans, the sixth chapter. We're going to come back to Acts. But in Romans uh, 6 and 3, it says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Notice, we are baptized into Jesus Christ. Amen? Um, let's go to Galatians chapter 3, and let's consider verse 27. And verse 27 says, For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Your baptism is you putting on Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Let's see what the book of Acts says. Let's go back to Acts. Acts 2 and 38. In Acts 2 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Peter baptized everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. Right there in the book. Um, let's go to Acts the eighth chapter. And we're going to look at Philip the Evangelist. All right. And right here in Acts, the eighth chapter, we're looking at considering Philip the Evangelist. In verse 12 of Acts 8, it says, But when they believed Philip preaching a thing concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Doesn't say how they're baptized yet, but let's read all along. Then Simon himself believed also, and he was baptized. And he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs that were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they come down, pray for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as of yet he was fallen upon none of them. Check this out. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The baptism formula they used, the name they used in that formula, was Jesus. Amen? Uh, let's go to Acts 19. In Acts 19 and verse number 2, it says, Had, he, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? A good question. We're going to cover more apostolic doctrine later on. We're going to talk about the Holy Ghost and why baptism is essential and how the Holy Ghost comes with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, uh, were ye, I said, Unto what then were ye baptized? So how were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him that should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Right here in the King James Version of the Bible, and even you can read the other versions of the Bible, we find that Jesus is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost right in Scripture. Everybody got it? Why is this so important that Jesus being the correct name to baptize people in? Well, let's consider what it says in Acts, um, the fourth chapter. Acts, the fourth chapter, and verse 12 reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must all be saved by the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the thing that we need to consider is baptism is actually part of being born again. Most people do not teach that, but we're going to go through another lesson at a future date. We're going to go through how the Bible prescribes baptism as being part of born again. Jesus told Nicodemus that a man must be born again. And Nicodemus was wondering, should that man go a second time into his mother's womb? And the, the answer to that question is no, but a man must be born of the water and of the spirit. And biblically speaking, to be born of the water is to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And to be born of the spirit is to receive the Holy Ghost. Future videos, we're going to go over the speaking in tongues and how that is biblical and baptism, how that is a New Testament practice and how it must be done. 
So um, I'm going to end this video, but I want you all to understand why we don't baptize people by saying Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. See you later.